welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I provide online divorce mediation and valuation services in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we will discuss cryptocurrency and divorce with Carolina Martinez, a certified fraud examiner, certified cryptocurrency investigator, and a cryptocurrency accountant in Miami, Florida. So if you lose your key and nobody else has the key, is that how some people have kind of like lost their Bitcoin? So I'll give you I'll give you my personal example. Um, back in 2017, our computer got hacked. We had, I don't remember how many Ethereum there, but we do have a private key. And the way that we set it up was for if somebody else wants to use it, they need a second key. They need to create another key, but they also need our key. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people, they just have one key and they don't do more uh, security measures. So our computer got hacked. One of our wallets got hacked. Right now, that wallet is worth almost $2,000 because it was Ethereum, which is one type of coin, the uh, cryptocurrency cryptocurrency coin that we bought back in 2015 and we know that that other person tried to get it but since our security measures were that other person created another key but he or she needs our key to have access to it Mm. what happens with a lot of people is that they do not put security security measures into their wallets or their exchanges so if you don't have that type of measure and some your computer gets hacked and you have your private key safe in your computer, let's say you have a Word document or you have it in an email, and that hacker is able to find the private key, they can get into your wallet and just steal everything that you have. Mm-hmm. Fortunately for us, we had the private key printed in a piece of paper, so it was not in our computer. And that's why the other person is not able. Right now, that those coins are there and nobody can take it. And uh, we're trying to get it, but it's, it's a very hard process. So whenever you do anything in cryptocurrency, you have to make sure that you know what, what are you doing. And w- let's say if you're sending coins, where are you sending coins? Because once you send it, you might not be able to get it back ever. Mm-hmm. Well, and if we go back to the Doja coin, then mm-hmm. if you're buying Doja coin, you're really just investing in a company that's based on cryptocurrency, right? You're not you're not really buying cryptocurrency when you're investing in Doja coin. Uh, Do- Doge coin is different. Doge coin, oh. the person that created it, um, he really wanted to prove that uh, cryptocurrency is decentralized. So when he created it, he basically sold all his coins. So nobody owns Dogecoin. There is not an owner there. So people buy it, uh, uh, going back to the blockchain, they buy it out of of the the Dogecoin blockchain, which I I don't remember which blockchain is that they use because there is different types. Um, But right now there is not an owner. And that's why a lot of people like Mark Cuban and uh, Elon Musk they are supposedly pro Dogecoin because it's proving that you don't need a bank behind it. You don't need someone behind it to be able to to trade those type of coins and to buy it and sell it or, or buy anything. Right now, mo- there are movie theaters accepting Dogecoin mm-hmm. as for for a payment. Well, and there's certain apps that even you know we don't have to mention them, but. There's certain apps that it says I can invest in Bitcoin, right? And I can mm-hmm. purchase it currently. So that's probably like the least secure way to invest. Um, it, it depends. Okay. It, you have to make sure you know what you're getting into it. If you go into a, a new um, exchange, um, let's say Coinbase or Binance, they do offer... Coinbase, even if you want to learn how cryptocurrency works, they give you rewards. They give you coins for free. Of course, they will not give you $10,000 worth of Bitcoin. They tell you, I'm going to give you $10 worth of Bitcoin 
for you to learn how it works because they want people to learn how it works so they can get more people buying their coins, buying the coins in their platform because they're not the owner of the coins. They have, they basically, it's like a, the, the uh, stock change market. They public, they have their companies publicly tra traded there. So if the coins are traded in their platform. So you have to be careful where you put your money into it. I always tell people, I'm not a financial advisor, but um, if just go with the, when you don't know how it works, go with the big companies that are US based for the US clients and make sure you do your due diligence. And if, if, Companies like Coinbase are, is offering you to get ten dollars for learning. I wouldn't mind taking that because right. they have small courses where you can learn. They even give you a little quiz at the end. Um, so yes, those are good. But then if you get one company that just came out of nowhere saying, "If you invest in my brand new crypto that I just created, if you put a thousand dollars, I will give you ten thousand dollars in three months." That's a red flag. Do yeah. not invest in that. So yeah. you have to make sure you do your due diligence before. And it depends on the company, how long they're being in business, and what is the, the uh, their purpose behind it. Mm -hmm. Now, it, I think there's even more complexities than I originally thought. <laughs>